Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Claire Deering, I would like to welcome you to this special drone tour of our dinosaur reserve. For security considerations, the location of our sanctuary will remain undisclosed. This is a necessary procedure to protect the rescued animals from being reclaimed by poachers. But we hope you will enjoy this exclusive look at the facility and our animals. If you'd like to support our continued rescue missions in 2023, please consider navigating to the bottom of your screen and hitting the thumbs up icon and the red subscribe button. The whole DFW staff thanks you for your support. Hidden away behind the natural barriers of the Southwest USA desert is one of several DFW sanctuaries. Since the fall of Biosyn, more and more rescue animals have been relocated to one of our facilities, and the Southwest USA Sanctuary we are currently touring is considered to be at capacity, housing 149 individual animals of 29 different species in expansive natural habitats. We will fly over the animals shortly, but first let me take you to the main base. The main base is built along a protected airstrip. This is how we transported the rescued animals from all over the world to this location. At the peak, new arrivals touch down daily. Since closing the Southwest USA Sanctuary to more animals, the airstrip is now solely used for cargo, supplemental food for the dinosaurs, as well as supplies for our staff and rotating personnel in and out. Upon arrival, the dinosaurs were examined by our paleomedical experts and then put in quarantine in the holding pens before being designated to a habitat and released among the general population. Since the animals come from dubious sources, as you might imagine, we always have to verify the health of the animals to protect the rest of the population before we introduce them. Currently, we still have two species occupying the holding pens pending further investigation. Two Parasaurolophus with a mysterious bioluminescent trait previously only seen in marine reptiles that we have in our facility, and an abominable hybrid our scientists have dubbed the Scorpius Rex after identifying scorpion fish DNA in its genome that gives a venomous quality to the quills of the hybrid's tail. Our staff is taking extra precaution when caring for this animal and relocation might prove to be difficult, hence we can always use more of your support. The DFW staff works around the clock to patrol the area and protect the animals from potential poachers. So far we have been lucky with this location remaining unknown, but we do not wish for any of our animals to fall back into the wrong hands which is why our rangers circle the sanctuary 24-7 for observation. There are few luxuries at the base, only simple barracks and mess halls, but our staff is dedicated to protecting these animals at any cost. Spared no expense, you might even say. Alongside the main base, we have two smaller satellite bases, one of which only accessible via a zip line across this canyon. Here we have the first habitat directly south of our main base. The largest species in this habitat is the spiked Alamosaurus. The three female specimens were quite the logistical hassle to transport, but they've settled in nicely. Other species in this habitat are the Pachyrhinosaurus and Warehosaurus. The combination of species in a habitat is determined by DFW's dinosaur behavioral experts with the help of Owen Grady and Dr. Alan Grant as consultants. It might surprise you that there is a carnivore in this habitat as well, the Australovenator. These fast megaraptors have no interest in attacking the herbivores they share their territory with, as long as we keep them well fed. And of course, that is exactly what we do with the money from our donors. To the east of the main base, we have an elongated desert river environment. The area is large enough that the territories of the inhabitants do not overlap. In the southern end, we have a pack of Carnotaurus, who mostly just cause trouble to the DFW trucks as they live up to their name of meat-eating bull. At the center, we have a large group of Dimetrodon. The Dimetrodon were contained to a cave system before they were rescued, but we found that the Dimetrodon adapted well to the desert environment, and they enjoy sitting in the water with their still absorbing warmth from the sunlight. Following the river north takes us to the habitat of the Minmai and its much larger relative, the Ankylosaurus. Both species keep mostly to themselves. Moving west, this takes us to one of our satellite operations, where mostly behavioral research is conducted. 
Isolated in its own habitat is the sole Megalosaurus. This is the only specimen of Megalosaurus in any of our DFW sanctuaries. We do not actually believe the Megalosaurus to be a solitary hunter. So if the DFW ever rescues another specimen of this species, it will be directly taken here to bond with this individual. As you might note, the lagoon sticks out like a sore thumb in the desert surroundings. Building a lagoon here was one of the most costly endeavors our organization has ever undertaken, but it was necessary for the housing of Kronosaurus, Attenborosaurus, and Styxosaurus, the latter possessing the same bioluminescent trait we observe in our new Parasaurolophus arrivals. The land surrounding the lagoon is home to a colorful pack of pyroraptors, whose bright green feathers actually provide them with camouflage among the ginkgo trees that were specially planted in choice areas of the sanctuary to provide the necessary shade for our animals. On occasion, a flying reptile wanders over from their territory in the north. When that happens, a helicopter crew is dispatched to tranquilize and relocate the animal back to where it belongs. The sophisticated ADS system from the Biosyn Sanctuary is not in place here at the DFW Sanctuary as it was considered inhumane. The effects of living under the ADS can still be seen in our rescued flying animals, which, still in fear of the ADS, do not dare to fly up very high. As long as the supply of fish is plentiful, even the towering Quetzalcoatlus is a peaceful inhabitant of our sanctuary sharing the lake with Barbarodactylus, Sungaripterus, and Geosternbergia. Moving to the west, we have a trio of Tyrannosaurus, one of them sporting a feathered coat, and another being the infamous Rex herself, which evaded DFW capture for many years before being taken to the Biosyn Valley. After the Biosyn Valley was exposed, it became a popular hunting ground for poachers. Although none managed to capture the Rex, many died trying. The DFW successfully relocated her to this sanctuary to put an end to the attempts to capture her. Now housing three Tyrannosaurus Rex does not come cheap. In fact, it is our most costly species to maintain as we constantly have to bring in food for them. Flying south through the valley, we encounter a large herd of herbivores, Parasaurolophus, Uranosaurus, and Hoyangosaurus. Further south still is one of our most unusual habitats looking at its occupants. We have two species of smaller carnivores, the Monolophosaurus and the Dilophosaurus. The two packs largely evade each other and each has its own feeding grounds to avoid territorial disputes. Here we also keep our pair of Giganotosaurus. Despite their menacing appearance as they were part of dinosaur fighting rings previously before their rescue, they have a fairly laid back temperament as we've discovered. Finally, the Dreadnoughtus roams this habitat. Thanks to its sheer size, the other animals don't bother them and they peacefully meander through the environment. The Dreadnoughtus is one of our most valuable dinosaurs. Bone dust of this species sells for over $5,000 per kilo. Considering their massive skeletal structure, that is a large sum of cash. We were lucky to have been able to save these animals before they had reached maturity, at which point they would have surely been slaughtered. Between our satellite outpost and the main base, we have our canyon habitat, traversed by our brave personnel via zipline. The habitat houses a Baryonyx trio, a quintet of Kentrosaurus, and a trio of Therizinosaurus. It may surprise you to know that the Therizinosaurus is the most dangerous species in our sanctuary. Thankfully, none of our workers have ever been fatally wounded, but the long claws and territorial behavior of the Therizinosaurus have been at the root of most on-site incidents requiring medical attention. The DFW thanks you for watching this tour, and we once more urge you to support our cause by hitting the thumbs up and the subscribe. If you ever have a dinosaur encounter in your area, please do not neglect to contact us immediately for intervention. Our contact details are on screen right now. This is your host, signing off. Thank you.